Hello, SGD Sacred Geometry Decoding uh, Decoded. Let's do um, a drawing exercise, and that's drawing a particular type of a proof in regards to the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triangle. I'm showing here some Masonic symbols because this connects to, uh, you'll see it in Freemasonry, but you'll see it going back even further, and actually you'll, you'll find the actual application of it going back much further um, and sort of spread across the world. But firstly, so you notice the three steps, uh, five, well the five and the seven, but let's focus on the three. Now what we have is E, A, F, C, M, M, and also here I have an example of a structure of Freemasonry. Again, notice one, two, three steps going to the beginning. So highlight the three steps. We have E, A, Entered Apprentice, the first degree, F, C, Fellow Craft, the second degree, and M, M, Master Mason, the third degree. Now, as far as I, uh, that's essentially the highest level that you can achieve in masonry. Now, all the other groups, whether York Rite, Scottish Rite, or uh, they're all affiliated bodies. They sort of come from there, but in terms of being a Freemason, it's you're a Freemason once you're a Master Mason, the third degree. So, third degree or a Master Mason. Uh, here's a tracing board, and again, Master Mason. Master Mason. But what I want to highlight is this piece on the side here because what we have is a 345 Pythagorean 345 is the first perfect Pythagorean triplet every right angle triangle you can apply Pythagorean theorem to it but the 345 is the first integer well like where 3 4 and 5 it's not a it's not a fraction it's a, an integer a whole number and this is a common emblem, very important symbol. And again, not just to, I'm showing it in regards to Freemasonry, but applies elsewhere as well. So here we see a Masonic pin, and you can even see one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, here's another example, but it doesn't have that checkerboard design. Uh, but all the, you know, it's not divided into squares, but it's the same uh thing there it's an important emblem in there because this again the origins of freemasonry go back to the craft guilds stonemasons and the application geometry just being so important in not just stone in carpentry and all forms of construction um just one of the essentials of geometry now here's a screenshot and they're talking about the third degree as in the third degree master mason even you might have heard the expression to give him the third degree so once you go for your become a master mason you essentially get interrogated and you have to you know, answer the questions correctly and that's the origin of you know to have to be questioned you know interrogated the third degree uh, in the 47th problem of Euclid Euclid's elements is uh, an ancient textbook on it has been updated over time but it's an ancient textbook on Euclidean geometry so it's basically working on a piece of paper you could say non-Euclidean geometry is working in 3d but uh, so again in Masonic text there's other examples but I'm just showing one but they're talking about uh, it should be it should remind Masons they, that, that they ought to love and study the arts and sciences because again the origins in stone masonry tilers and these are uh, brick masons just geometry you know you couldn't build the great cathedrals the grand temples even the, the beautiful modern public buildings um, you know state capitals that type of thing that really if if you're not applying geometry um, to to the issue there is uh, that's why all the famous alchemists hermeticists uh, were uh, studied geometry okay I'll mention John Dee he was like a professor of Euclidean geometry here's another example I forget which cathedral is so again it's not just masonry it's you'll see it applied elsewhere wherever, wherever there is architecture stone masonry uh, whether the application or even the symbology you'll see the three four five triangle now compare this one is the same as this one but you should notice that it's different from this one this is a three four five triangle that is a three four five triangle this is not a three four five triangle it's a one one square root of two triangle which is still emblematic um, because it uh, creates the builder's square. 90 degrees, then you have a 45 degree, and then a 45 degree angle. In your normal drawing kit, you get those two little triangular uh, the set squares. 
one will be 30, 60, 90 degrees, and the other one will be 45, 45, and 90 degrees. So it's 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 the building square um, in there. Now, so in case you look through tracing boards, uh, very often you'll see this one, the three, four, five triangle. But if we look at this one, okay, at, if you're not paying attention to the detail, you might think it's a three, four, five, but it's not. It's a one, one square root of two, or you're creating the builder's square uh, design in there. Now, there are uh, different forms of a builder's square because sometimes they, they, don't, they don't always, in this, in this builder's square, this side and that side is equal length. Okay, but it's not always the case, but I'm not going because I just want to show the three, four, five triangle. So again, we see the Masonic pins, three, four, five triangle. You'll see it also in cathedrals and um, emblematic sites. But going back even before the formation of um, Freemasonry, this is a, a, a frontispiece for Athanasius Kircher and one of his books on musical proportions. I've shown it in regards to um, alchemical symbolism, astronomical symbolism. But notice down here in the corner where I've just zoomed it in again, we have a three, four, five triangle. Very, very um, important to the, just the whole hermetic esoteric tradition because just like music, this is applied sciences. Uh, again, when you see this esoteric, it's often, well, there are other elements to it, but at the end, you know, you, you can attach all sorts of philosophy to to astronomy, you can attach all sorts of philosophy to music, uh, to mathematics, to alchemy and metalworking, or to geometry. But at the heart of it, and that's what they all share. So all the different traditions, whether it's Freemasons, the alchemists, uh, the, just the architects in general, it's the practical applications. That's one theme that they they all all share. And so. Geom this is a quote by Kepler. Geometry has two great treasures. One is a theorem of Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared is C squared. The other is the division of line into extreme and mean ratio. He's talking about the golden ratio, but Pythagorean theorem and the golden ratio. So now let's uh, draw. I'll show you how to draw it. And then we'll look at the end, um, how it's applied in uh, ancient architecture. Okay, let's do... Draw a three, four, five triangle, uh, as is very commonly seen in uh, esoteric artwork, Freemason tracing boards, and of course being ever so important in in geometry and in architecture, you'll find this three, four, five, um, and the vesica, of course, being a common theme in literally in the construction of uh, these large ancient and modern buildings. So we begin with a construction line and now we'll draw a vesica. Um, I'm using, because I want it to show up, so I'm using a very dark pencil and they, you know, they don't keep the fine point. If you're doing this, you want to use a very light pencil, like a, uh, I'm using a, is it a 6B, yeah, or I've got a 7B here. What you want is uh, pencils that are H, because they give a very fine line and then you can um, then use ink later on and rub out the, the pencil marks or just use, I, I like to actually, I think it looks cool when the construction lines are sort of hidden there underneath, but uh, begin with a vesica and I'm doing this uh, horizontally. Okay, so now we can do the, we have a vertical and of course, because one of the cool things about the vesica is that now it gives you a template so you have the horizontal and the vertical. Uh, one way to do it is to put the point of your pen, pencil on the spot and you can adjust the ruler or the straight edge technically. Um, in compass and straight edge you shouldn't be using markings but so it's still a straight edge. Okay so now we have that. Now what I want to do is create a rectangle uh, around this. And so, firstly, we we'll find the center. And I'm just going to mark those two places. So we have, as we'll see in a moment. Now we go to the bottom, and we draw an arc. Hopefully, that's showing up. Yep, that should show up on the camera. 
draw another arc and do the same at the top. That point on the centre there. Okay, now. Oh, one more step. What we now need to do is change the compass setting. So put the point on the center and adjust it to the end of a vesica there. Make sure it's on the center. Because if, again, when you're doing this, because I've got a thicker pencil and I would, if I was drawing not on camera, I'd be a lot more careful, spend a lot more time to make sure everything is ma matching up because a little error will magnify. So, find that edge there. Yes, now. I go to that point, mark, and mark the bottom. And then we do that on the other side. Oh, just enough, we should have kept that arc a little bit bigger and the other side as well, so one, two, three, four, now this will create a rectangle that's going to enclose that vesica, uh, put your pencil point and again if you have to take account to the thickness of the point so you know you don't actually put your ruler right over the top, you sort of have to compensate for the, how thick the uh, pen or whatever your marker is that you're using. Again, you want to be using as a fine a point as possible. There'll probably be a few little places where it's not perfectly matching up because it's slightly dull pencil because it's so dark. try to compensate for the width of the pencil when you're lining up your ruler as well. Oops, a little bit out, but anyway, you still get the ID. And we close off that line there. So now we have a rectangle, which is, so I'll set the compass back just to show you. It's a two to three rectangle, which has musical prop, like this two to three ratio. You'll see a uh, Colosseum, temple, um, cathedrals where they're two, uh, you know, two, you could sort of overlay and drop the plans of a lot of cathedrals, uh, Colosseum and these um, other places and also the rhombus but that's something else I want to stick with that but what we have is a one, two, three by one, two wide, two to three. But with this what we have is enough because so I can almost forget this bottom rectangle, I just want to focus now on this top rectangle. So it's just this rectangle that we'll be looking at. So we had a two to three, uh, now we've cut that in half and so now what we have is a three to four rectangle. So two to three because now we've cut it in half, it's now a um, four to three rectangle. And I can, uh, I don't want to ruin the drawing for the moment by writing that in, so we have four by three. Now all we need to do is from one corner to the other, draw a diagonal. I'll just freehand it over here, that's in camera. So that's a three by four. And then we have the diagonal and Pythagorean theorem A squared plus B squared equals C squared, C being the hypotenuse. So A squared nine, B squared 16. Therefore that has to that is c squared or in other words 16 plus 9 is 25 squared so it's because it's squared so we get this what's the square root of 25 is 5. so now we have a 3 4 5 triangle and with that it's now just a matter of 
uh, to do that um, drawing uh, of that three, four, five triangle and that beautiful proof of there. Uh, we can now just follow through. Okay, now I just want to uh, darken this. So all, everything is going to be a construction line. But this is your original point of the drawing. So if you're working with pencil, you could now ink that square in, or this triangle, sorry, three, four, five triangle. So that's inked in now, and I could, I still want to keep, some of these construction lines will be handy, but basically it's, you can you know, pretty much just to lighten it down, but that's, so we'll, there will be some helpful construction lines that are still there, but it's, uh, yeah, you can uh, remove most of these because it's such a, it's seven or six B, such a heavy dark pencil. Uh, it's yeah, they're not going to rub out that easily, but the purpose of that was to create this three, four, five triangle. Now we just want to complete the rest of the drawing, and so again, these construction lines you already have will sort of come in handy. But I want to extend this one down a little bit. Now we set the compass to that width there. Mark it and mark it again on the other side. And I'll change the colour at this point to help highlight it. There's my markers. Use it blue, and we're just going to draw it. We have this square. The thing is, with markers, if you hold it down and adjust a ruler, it's going to bleed into it, so it's not advisable if you're using ink or a marker, but now we have this square, and because that's three, four, five, so now we have four, 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 four on that square. Now we need to draw another square on this side, and again we can preserve some of those construction lines from earlier, I'll just highlight them again, just extend that out a piece. Extend that out. Adjust the compass to the edge length there. Mark once. Once more. I'll change the colour again. This time the green. And it's just about drawing a square. Okay, so now we have most of it. We have a three, four, five triangle and two squares, but now we need to create a square going that way. And to do that, firstly what I'm going to do is bisect this line and we can cut it out and I'll show you what I mean. So 
Just set your compass to a random position as long as it's more than halfway. The, the, the wider the bigger, but I'm going to draw a section of arc. So basically I'm just drawing a vesica Pisces, but I'm only drawing a portion of it. In, in essence, not quite, but uh, now from where these two points meet, we can draw a stri straight line out, and now we, we would have a 90 degrees, so we have the base, basis to do a square. Let's use that construction line. Okay, now what we can do is now we set the compass to the hypotenuse of the triangle. section of arc on this side, one on this side and we'll also draw it there. Now where that line cuts through the middle, set the compass again. And place it place it here okay now we have one two three four points so we have our fifth triangle sorry our square of five side of length of five three 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 four, four, four and four, and now five, five, five and five. Is that in camera? Yep. And this applicate like it's in the esoteric artwork, but it's in the arc. It's in terms of of knowledge, the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared is uh, one of the most important uh, discoveries um, uh, that that we have because it leads to so many other things. It's like one of the main main building blocks of geometry, maths, trigonometry. Uh, and all around, so I can't really be understated how important it is and, and why it would be so important amongst these. So the Hermeticists, the, the Masons, they were geometricians. People like John Dee was literally a professor in Euclidean geometry. Albert Dürer, um, Athanasius Kircher, you look at the works of the famed alchemists, and they were almost to a man, well they were all geometric, they were all, they were all holding the the compass it's one of their main emblems and tools and so the applications for it and then there's spirit you know you can interpret these things and take them further and then look at the spiritual aspects of it but now we have everything that we need to create so now you can just get rid of all of these construction lines none of this is necessary anymore And there you have uh, the basics of it anyway. Now you can, now all you really need to do is draw the, the grid pattern. And that's not to, and again, you shouldn't really, using a straight edge, you shouldn't be using marked edges. You should be using a straight edge with, and, and the compass. And we can draw those grids pretty easily because we already have the three, four, five. So we start with the three. Okay, and so, this is four, that is three. So if I mark that on that side and there, now we um, I just do that all around and then reverse it. I 
she should sort of just on, on each corner draw it and draw it there, move to the next corner, draw it and draw it, move to the next corner um, and do that again. So now we have, um, we've started to cut this up into a grid. So that's four, so one, two, one. Now we can use that. Actually, while I've got the three in here, now I'm gonna to go to the five. Mark it, mark it, go to the next corner. Mark and mark. And again, just do that on each corner. Okay, so that's three, one, sorry, uh, three and three, so that is one. So it's, in essence, you have two, one, three. Now I'm gonna change that to the, because uh, we've already cut it up into two, so now we need to cut up the, uh, the, the other, triangle so set now I've set it to two onto the corner mark it mark it go to the corner again so basically just creating the like a checkerboard pattern on each of these and we're following the rules of compass and straight edge geometry so one two three that's the three now we have the lines to create the checkerboard and now we just need to reset it to one. So now I've cut it into one, two, three, four equal parts on all side. One, two, three equal parts on all side. And now we can just finish off to five. And again, just go to each corner and mark it off. And now we have everything we need to do the final piece. Oops. I missed one mark there, so I can just, because now it's set to one, I can just fill that in. One, one, go to that last corner. One, so now again we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now it's a matter just of drawing in the lines of the checkerboard. that I originally used on those squares. So it would have been better. But you know, you get the, get the point here and then we can just colour in uh, the checkerboard pattern, but even that's not necessary. But uh, yeah, but this is what you'll see, you know, as they say, hidden in plain sight in in the actual structures themselves, such as the uh, uh, cathedrals, and even uh, that is one half of Cathray's pyramid. Cathray's pyramid is two to three, 
so many other pyramids uh, at that two to three ratio, which sort of means that the right angle triangle that makes them up is uh, three to four, therefore the hypotenuse is five. So you sort of have, you know, uh, esoteric, hermetic, alchemical symbolism, but the architecture, um, both ancient and right through up until the modern period, still carries this through. Uh, also, uh, musical proportions as well, because we have a quadrivium, astronomy, music, geometry, and arithmetic uh, really are sort of all parts of the same system. If, and if you appreciate one, you'll sort of, you know, so you, even if you, if you study music theory without realizing it, you'll be studying geometry. And if you're studying geometry without realizing it, you'll be studying astronomy and arithmetic and geometry just applies to everything. But now we have the uh, uh, checkerboard pattern. I, don't know, I should have done that originally, but I'll just use the original colour I, I marked out those squares in. And then again we can just rub out the construction lines. So square of freeze again, because I'm using the thicker points and the markers, again, you take your time, you're going to be nice and accurate with there, but uh, there we have our square of three, three, four, five. Uh, there's a book called Hidden Harmonies by the Kaplans and it's a history on the on collections of Pythagorean truths, uh, proofs in, for Pythagorean theorem. It actually works into infinite dimensions as well. So this is on a, uh, on a uh, Euclidean geometry. It's on a f flat piece of paper, but it's just but Pythagorean theorem and that beauty of it, a squared plus b squared equals c squared as long as it's a right angle triangle. It's really infinite the um, applications for it and just again you cannot understate the importance of this in a development of well, again uh, uh, architecture but even in regards to the development of um, maths and science and it's like uh, pi it's sort of one of those things that appears uh, you'll find these um, yeah you, you can, you can, it's just so so important because it's you know just the way we learn you know we're sort of almost made by the education system unless you're um, into your math or your geometry which is sort of considered a you know a geeky thing but it's it's just the way the system works that you know we, we go to a music class and you sort of learn music in a rather boring way uh, you go to a math class and it's quite dry you go to a your science class and it's yeah it's quite sort of dry but that's the, Especially why I come to appreciate these old, um, the alchemists and the hermeticists, uh, even though their, their ideas might be a bit sort of quaint now compared to where we've come, but you know we stand on the shoulders of giants, and and what they developed um, is you know, and at, at the very least their, their method of teaching, because what you had was the seven liberal arts, which was basically for the rich and it's still like that now and then we had what was the servile arts and I think if you're familiar with the um, oh geez I used the wrong colour but okay it's good enough um, if you've, you know, there's a famous uh, well played bit by uh, comedian George Carlin and the education systems to sort of set up to make just you learn just enough to fill out the forms and operate the machines but it's not uh, designed you know they, they don't want to encourage critical thinking and I think that's one of the beauties of the quadrivium and the seven liberal, liberal arts, that it was 
uh, you had to do all of them. And the way it was structured was that if by doing one, even if you weren't musically inclined like myself, I've come to appreciate music theory uh, by appreciating the geometry and the astronomy and the arithmetic connections. And maybe you're musically inclined and if you find geometry boring, well, you'll find that by learning your music and the, uh, that geometry um, is actually music. And as those phrases such as uh, architecture is music frozen in time, um, geometry is music frozen in time types of things. Okay, but now that's the essence of it. Now I could, you know, colour in a checkerboard pattern, but I'll, you know, you can do that on, um, on your own. It's not necessary because necessary you have all the lines there that are uh, important to the construction. And now we can just rotate it around. And so usually when you'll see it, you'll see it like that. In camera. Uh, also worth noting, if I so I'll extend this line out on one side, the rule is not long enough. And on the other side, and I have to eyeball it and we do a right angle triangle. And the right angle triangle on that side. What you have is a 3, 4, 5 triangle and a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now that distance is equal to that distance as well. So so you might look at it and think, well that's going to be longer because the square is bigger, but because of the angle of it there. So that distance is uh, equal to that one as well. But there's the basics uh, of it, and again I'll show some examples of uh, where you'll see it, and whether it's the practical or, or just in, you, again can't understate how important it is. And sort of again it comes from the Vesica. It's a, it's an emblem, but it also carries uh, profound knowledge and just one of the foundation stones of our. Um, modern understanding and it comes from geometry and logic as well because that's the trivium and the use of logic and reasoning is so important into working these things out so with that um, have a good one and I'll just go through run through some examples and so you again you if you're used to this uh, if you ever look at this esoteric card you'll see this every so in regards to Pythagorean theorem I'll do a focus on the three four five triangle but for instance in uh, stone circles um, in England, but now let's look at uh, Karnak in France and the crew uh, Crisuno Cromlech around about 4000 BC. It's, it's, it's a rectangular stone arrangement and um, Alexander Tom uh, surveyed this. So again, we'll, you, just as we, with the drawing of Vesica Pisces and we could overlay that and what we get is a 345 triangle which fits in with the Crisuno um, Cromlech. Now, Greeks get official credit for it, uh, but again, it's how much older is this? And again, these are older cards from an older video. I ever did a series and then a compilation updated in regards to this. So now let's look at the pyramids. And in the middle, we have the Khafre pyramid. Now, that's an important one, but uh, the exact date that Egyptian rope stretches, so what they would is get a piece of rope, tie knots in it, so it would be you know, of equal distance, creating a three, four, five triangle. They would use this to, uh, so after the flood um, come along, because the flood is another connection, the yearly flood, which was the, the cycle of life defining Egypt. It was not rain, but the flood that brought uh, snow and rain from Central Africa down the Nile to Egypt that gave them their, the lifeblood of that civilization. So they were definitely using a three, four, five triangle. The rope stretches uh, at a later point. Now the exact origins of can be argued, but now let's look at an example of the architecture. So we're using a three, four, five triangle. Again, we'll just show the vesica. So the vesica uh, creates a rectangle which we drew and it has a ratio of three to two. That is the ratio of the Pyramid of Khafre there in the middle, one of the casing stones still on the top. 411 cubits wide, 274 cubits high. 
which means that the right angle triangles that create that cross section is a three, four, five triangle. Now, if we use that same three, four, five triangle or the vesica three to two ratio, that also gives us a ratio between so the red pyramid base 420 cubits is free to the 280 cubits giving the great pyramid its height now uh, 420 for okay, i won't go into that but now we the cafre pyramid is and in other videos i went more into this because you can join all the pyramids together with this very basic geometry the proportions of one will lend itself to another but that's just one example of the Khafre Pyramid. Now if we go to the uh, Khufu, the Great Pyramid, and we look at the um, King's Chamber, it also has a three, four, five uh, proportions in there. There's a whole other bunch of lovely math proportions built in there, but we also get the three, four, five triangle. And uh, again, I did a series um, looking at the plateau and extending out the work of Magli a bit to look at the angles of, for instance, the causeway and how they um, connect to the solstice, the equinox um, cycle as well, and the alignments and the measurements between there as well, all very nice. But I mentioned the zero point marker, so that where the causeway touches a Cafre Valley Temple uh, creates a place where the, the measurements of length, um, but also the, it's, it's, it's just a perfect observation point um, in regards to the calendar, the flood cycles. So summer solstice um, m marks the beginning of Arquette, the flood season, that's when the sun sets directly between the two of the larger pyramids. The symbol for Arquette um, being a sun going down between two mounds and the season of Arquette or the inundation was the flood season. Three seasons in Egypt, each lasted 120 days and over 120 days, so from the solstice to the end of Arquette, the flood season, 120 days is simple, 37 degrees, but we look at the angles created by a 3-4-5 triangle, 53.13 and 36.869, 37 degrees. Well, because of a nature, like, uh, you have to include the winter and summer, so 360 days plus five days the intercalinary period. Now, uh, depending on, if you measure from the first day, because the solstices last for three days, so for three days it appears, two to three days it appears that the sun sets in the same spot each day. And so if you include that, you actually find that the angle which defines the Cafre Pyramid and the three, four, five triangle also defines 120 days of the flood, the, the, the heartbeat, the life uh, behind Egyptian civilization. So Cafre Pyramid gives us a three, four, five King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid, three, four, five and even the positioning of the wider plateau in regards to the solstice and, and the seasons mark the Egyptian New Year summer solstice marking the first day of the flood season. We also get that angle in there, but we can take that a little bit further. Again, I've, you might have seen this before, um, but so now let's look at that Khafre pyramid and the three, four, five triangle and how it applies to many other places across Egypt. So let's begin firstly with um, of all of the grand pyramids, the three, four, the proportions of Khafre pyramids defines the majority of the pyramids, especially those with a pyramid text. So, so Pepe II, 120 cubits high, 150 wide, that's a two to three ratio, which again just gives us a right angle triangle. Um, Merenenre has the same dimensions, proportions. Now, even though these pyramids have crumbled, just to point out, there are still casing stones at the bottom which provide the angle. So we can measure the base, we know the angle, therefore we know the height. So even these ones that are in a really bad state, uh, we still have uh, the information. And again, that's where we uh, built in the dynasty just after the fourth where we have all the pyramid texts as well. And these are all um, same proportions. And notice that they all shared the 150 base length by 100 height. And there's only and many Kamau, that's in a really bad state, so it's hard to know exactly, but they've, uh, it seems to be that, that different size, but the same proportions. But now let's look elsewhere. So Thebes, where Karnak and Luxor Temple is, and Valley of the Kings, Valley of the Queens, and also Abydos, Temple of Seti and the Asira. That shares the same in the ground plan. So, uh, begin like okay Luxor temple find the, the the main axis 
and it's 36.87 degrees off so for defining it you could draw the calf rate plan on the ground uh, using the cardinal points and you get the angle of Luxor again that connects to the floods as well that's why I believe it's the purpose and um, and that Habu notice that they all point to the valley of the kings as well I would suspect that they also point to specific temples uh, all of it so it's not just one or two sites it's pretty much all of Thebes and all the grand um, uh, architecture there so the now there's a slight offset at the front with the um, entrance courtyard to the main temple and that is 53.13 degrees which again creates the Khafre pyramid 345 triangle um, also have a great pyramid angle in there but that's not relevant for now Deir el Medina which was um, a special encampment above Thebes next to the Valley of the Kings where all the uh, workmen um, who had very special privileges because they had special skills were all stationed up there uh, they were even the workmen they were even rich enough to build their own pyramid tombs and but again Deir el Medina again that angle um, again working off the cardinal points um, has the same 345 triangle and again coming back to the flood and the importance of it there so we saw it at uh, Giza and the pyramids south down to Abu Sir and further on and we saw it all over Thebes again I've done this in a longer video I went through it more quick so I'm just going through it very quick now let's look now at Abydos Temple of Seti and the Osiron they're on the same alignment 36.87 degrees again gives us that 345 triangle alignment uh, uh, earlier I mentioned at the very beginning I talked about that uh, the builders square 45 45 90 degrees so this is pyramid of Kulkulkan just like Khafre's pyramid um, it has a, a connection to the equinox and so there you can see how the, on that day the shadow created by the terraces creates that serpent but 45 degrees, so 45, 45, 90 degrees, you get the Masonic building square. But the terraces themselves are not at 45 degrees, they're angled at 53 degrees. So again, you could use that. The angle of a terrace would match the angle created by the Caffrey pyramid as well. So I think it's a nice connection um, there as well. And so once you've drawn the three, four, five triangle again, you'll see it in all that em emblems and symbolism, but it's uh, uh, very much an important constant going back um, cross cultures because it's, uh, this doesn't have to have been transferred. It's, uh, it could be, I'm not saying it's not, um, but I think people everywhere are quite clever in this type of geometry. We just, again, we drew it just from the vesica and a few lines here some very basic logic following some very basic rules you can uh, they could have acquired this knowledge without it you know some master race coming before them because you know people made spoons without and boats and spears without being taught by a progenitor um, global civilization and it's you see very you know people come to the same conclusions even at you know separate locations I do. I think there is some evidence for a for it. Um, very tenuous, of course, but uh, it's not necessary for for this to come around because it's you just it's like the um, the flower of life design. It's it's built into nature. If you start working with a compass, you know the the rules of the, of drawing circles is going to lead you to a certain place because that's just the rules of geometry, and that people could have used these and discovered these and appreciated them. Uh, for instance, in South America, the um, uh, in Central America, sorry, as well, they were master astronomers and mathematicians, and they found they were calculating solar eclipses a million years into the future. Uh, in literally, maybe not even hundreds of thousands of years into the future, they found this cave coded with mathematical co uh, calculations of astronomical events. And, um, but anyway, so three, four, five triangle, you draw it, and we see it in esoteric, um, hermetic type of symbolism as well, but you'll also find it in 
not just the architecture of a couple pyramid, you'll find it in many pyramids, but also in the floor plans and of uh, the great sites in Egypt as well. And again, I've had many others, but these are just older cards and the angles connected because again it joins to the flood season as well which I think is a cosmic coincidence in regards to that as well but yeah so I think these drawing exercises help um, I, I used to draw a lot more often I think it finds it very meditative um, and also you have to apply logic to it I, I would discover things drawing that were of then I found of course thousands of years earlier people had discovered those same things but if you draw and you make these connections on your own you might not have been the first but you own that knowledge as much as anyone else because it wasn't taught to you you discovered it even if you're not the first and don't have a copyright you still own it if you um, if you start to draw and and just, so you don't need to read Euclid's elements of course it's very dry if you're not into your geometry you know it's going to be you know like, yeah very dry very boring but by doing the drawing itself and that compass and straight edge work um, I think that's got a I'm more technical but if you, as an artistic template you can like using the vesica uh, what can come from there it's you know because you can the rules of geometry um, uh, is also a creativity in it and, and the rules are strict but the, the strict rules lend itself to a infinite creativity and depends on what you want to do with it and again as, as far as your imagination wants to take you and that's why um, so okay with that that was the drawing here's some examples of where you can find it in separate uh, architecture cultures around the world could be all coincidence yeah, I'll leave that to you with that uh, have a good one thanks for watching